Dr. Richard Park, physician, co-founder, and chief executive officer of CityMD. Welcome to Juicing with Gary. Nice to meet you, Gary. Pleasure, pleasure's all mine. Well, today, Dr. Park, we're going to juice. And so what I've done is I've created a juice just for you. Have you ever heard of the movie and play Hairspray? With John Travolta? With John Travolta. Well, today, I've made for you you can't stop the beat. You know that song that was in the movie? You can't stop the beat, the motion in the lotion. Come on, you know this song, no? All right, well listen, maybe someday we'll go to Broadway and see it together. So, let's get to some juicing. If you just cut that into a quarter for me, that would be wonderful. Yeah, you're doing a pretty good job with that knife. Yeah, and just put it all over there, watch your fingers. I'm sure, did you have many accidents when you were a physician? Uh, not with knives, no. Oh, okay, all right, well I'm glad, I'm glad. We Medical teach, school paid off. We always teach our residents, when you make a mistake, you don't go, oops, you go, there. Oh. So when you hear some doctor say there, that's a mistake, so. <laughs> well, a little, little inside. I hope they never inside. hear that. I hope they never hear that again. <laughs> if you would turn on the juicer. There we go. Hardest part. Okay. Oh, there you go. Oh, beautiful. Good. Just keep going. Just keep going. Oh, that's lovely. So we might try a whole, let's try a whole carrot. Get him in there. Get him down there. Yeah, not with your fingers. Yeah. But remember, you can't stop the beat. Yeah. All right, shut it off. Oh, the ginger smells. Okay. The yeah, yeah, bottom's up. Uh, almost. It will be a cheers yeah. for sure. Right to the top. I love it, the juice. Gotta love it, the juice. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Your straw. Thank you, Gary. My pleasure. Oh, wait, and we have one other stirrer. You don't have to eat the onion, but you have to have a stirrer for your drink. Oh, thank you. There. And cheers. Cheers, Gary. It's actually very good. Isn't that great? You can't stop the beat, baby. It's actually you very good. I'm a shit. Let's go see hairspray. Right. <laughs> Well, Richard, thank you again for inviting us into your offices. You have a beautiful place, great people. So you're a physician. You were an emergency room physician. So where did the idea to leave the hospital setting to build this beautiful business come from? Gary, that's, that's correct. I am an ER doctor and I worked in the emergency room. And in 2005, we opened up our first clinic. And to be quite honest, there was no grand vision at the time. I have two children with special needs. Mm. Um, my younger one is 16 and he's nonverbal. My older one is 18 and mm. he's also autistic. And so really, at the time, I wanted to provide a little bit of a safety egg, a nest egg, so that my children are taken care of, for, as any parent desires, mm. long after we're gone. So in 2005, uh, me and a few partners, we opened up our first uh, practice in New Hyde Park. You know, our mission here is to build healthier and kinder communities. Mm. And, you know, we, we really mean it. It's a calling, it's not just a job. How do you do that? How do you make it compassionate and, and kinder? You know, I, I don't even think we think about it. I mm. think it's what happens when you take intense people pleasers. Mm. At the end of the day, a lot of us are very, mm. we're people pleasers mm. in healthcare. And um, when you have that approach to healthcare and patient experience, you do everything it takes to make that patient comfortable. Because that patient is not just a patient, it could be you, it could be me, yeah. it could be our parents. And so what happens when you take care of patients like they're your friends? What happens then? Yeah. And, and I, I think this is really a natural outpouring of that approach. And it's, it's really um, instinctual, it wasn't planned, it wasn't strategic. Yeah. It's the values, it's not the shiny features. You need the shiny features. We're having shiny features without values. It's about having the patient's trust. To have the patient's trust, you need to be trustworthy. If you're trustworthy, you can advise them and they'll follow your instructions. It turns out today when, peop when patients follow your instructions, yeah. you can get them to the right place. It's valuable, it's sustainable, and it helps create this virtuous circle where you can now serve kindness. Mm. It pays for itself. How do you serve kindness and have it sustainable? Because let's face it, Gary, healthcare is a really, really challenging environment. Yeah. Well, it's challenging and it's generally cold. So everything that you're defining, honestly, is fresh, unique, uh, and, and you feel that heart in it. And that's why it is a purpose. I can see it in your eyes. It's a purpose for you, and that's the differentiator between that and many other situations. I remember when I was in grade school, probably fourth or fifth grade, falling off a slide mm -hmm. and landing on my backside now that I think of it, I probably broke my tailbone. Oof. 
And I remember not being able to walk and being in bed for three or four days before my dad finally decided to take me to a doctor. And he didn't take me to a doctor because, you know, back then uh, we didn't have health insurance. Kids, children didn't have universal health care insurance. And, you know, we couldn't afford to go to the doctor. And so he took me instead to a friend of ours, a friend of the family, Dr. Kim. And he took me to his home and we went downstairs to his basement where there was a, a little medical office mm. and he took care of me. But what struck me was him, I remember him taking my dad aside discreetly so as not to embarrass him in front of, my, of his son, whispering to him and talking to him. And then when my dad came out, we left. And I remember asking, because I also was very conscious of, of cost and, sure. and of, of money, quite frankly. And I, I asked my dad, how much did this cost? And he said, Dr. Kim waived all fees. Oh. oh. So the interesting part is Dr. Kim and my dad are golfing buddies today. They still play, they're still friends. Yeah. And uh, I mentioned the story to him. Dr. Kim has no idea, has no <laughs> recollection of the event. For me, it was such a, it left such a lasting impression. But to him, it was such a small thing, he doesn't even remember. You just don't know where the seeds lie, what you plant, and yeah. small acts of kindness can really, really germinate. And because of Dr. Kim, six million patients' visits affected by that small seed. I love that word kindness, but when I think of urgent care centers, I'm sick, I've got to go there, long waits, paperwork. So talk to me a little bit about how that happens as an experience when I come into CityMD. 50% of our patients when they come in don't have a primary care doctor. So can you imagine, Gary, coming into CityMD for chest pain? Mm. You don't have a primary care doctor. Yeah. We have to make sure that you're safe. Okay? So I could send you to the emergency room, but people don't want to go to the emergency room. No. Okay? And I'd send patients home. Okay. with my cell number saying, tomorrow morning, I'm going to make an appointment with you with a cardiologist. What happens? I call them, they don't pick up. Yeah. I don't know what happened to them. Yeah. To take care of our patients, to make sure that they're safe, we created a system, a process called aftercare. It takes care of all the issues after a patient leaves our office. Remember, they may not have a primary care doctor. Sure. And even if they did, the primary care doctor might be busy or on vacation. That patient walked in. I touched that, him, I touched that person, that patient. We're responsible for him or her. So what aftercare does, it takes care of all the navigation, the uh -huh. difficult navigation work out of the patient's hand. You know, in 2005, Gary, when we opened our first urgent care, it was in New Hyde Park, Long Island, having patients that come to you once a year frequently was a new thing for me. I realized that I love taking care of patients. Mm. I gave up my cell number. To this day, in fact, I give up my cell number to every patient I've ever seen. When you give out your cell phone number, people use it. Yeah. <laughs> they use it. But not in the way I thought. I get calls years later, and now they text, but at the time they would call you years later, and they would, it would be something like this, Gary. Dr. Park, you saw me for a sore throat, and you're not going to remember me. But my mom, this is the patient speaking, my mom has cancer. Mm. I don't know what to do. Who do you recommend to take care of my mom? Oh my. For whatever reason, they sense that they could trust me. So it's really that trusted advisor, trusted influencer in healthcare. That's what doctors did 50 years ago. Yeah. We call it new today, but it's the old is new again. And that is exactly right. I, I love this concept of servanthood and the fact that as you're speaking, I can see one of the reasons that it's, it's so successful is you're a servant leader. And those that succeed here at CityMD, the definition of succeed, are servant leaders. Eat last, open the door for others. Um, that's, what, that's the model that we want to, to show. Well, we've talked about so many amazing elements and aspects of this work, this vision, this passion. So if you could sum it up in just a phrase or a sentence, how would you frame it? Gary, at CityMD, we're putting humanity into healthcare. Richard, with that said, one more time. Cheers. Thank you so much, Gary. Cheers.
Mm-hmm.